Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 30th of December 2019 today. So apologize, it's been a while since my last video, but I had to do an update today. Today is a very key time in Bitcoin. Reason being is we've got our yearly close coming up tomorrow. And as we all know, the closing price for a candle, in particular high time frame candles, a yearly chart in particular, um, it really gives you a good gauge of whether sentiment is bullish or bearish. So had to get a video out today so that we can anticipate where we can expect price to be heading. Now, the significance of this video is I do think that tomorrow's closing price will give us a huge indication as to whether price is going to be heading a lot further down, either beneath 3.2K or whether we're going to see a turnaround at this point. Now, there is a bullish setup. I'm going to discuss it in this video. But the catch is that it needs to start acting very, very quickly and it needs to at least do something tomorrow. So I'm going to go through all of these things in this video. We're using all the usual indicators that I use, Elliott wave pitchforks, horizontal levels, Camarilla pivots. We'll look at time and moving averages as well. So if you're interested, stay tuned. All right, guys, so uh, so if you haven't noticed, I've turned down the volume on my intro. A lot of people had flagged that up. So uh, yeah, I finally got around to changing that. I'm not particularly savvy with video editing, but I finally decided to do something about it. So if you find that is just about the right volume for you, then perhaps leave a like. Otherwise, just write you know, a couple of decibels up or down in the comments and I can see what I can do. Um, but yeah, that's all sorted. So that's a big change because obviously uh, it's been an issue for quite a while. Now, let's focus on Bitcoin now. And yeah, first of all, as I say, apologies at this video. Uh, I've not done a video for a while, but we've been following this pitchfork coming down and there hasn't been too much to give an update about. It's really been adhering to this pitchfork very, very well. Um, now, first thing I want to point out is this potential bullish setup however there are i do have concerns about the closing price on bitcoin now first of all long term count and i'm not going to go over it in this video but check out my video where i talk about bitcoin going eventually to potentially three, uh, 350k all right now i don't care whether bitcoin's going to head up from here or come down to 1k 2k it doesn't matter end goal would be around 350k and i know that's hard to get your head around but check out my video where i did a video on that um i think it's called end of the bear market or something like that um so yeah that will explain my long-term count so it required quite a bit of explanation so i'm not going to go into it in this video but essentially i was looking at this as the top of our wave three and the subsequent price action all being a wave four whereby i was looking at this being a symmetrical triangle with this being our A, B, going into our C, then we see our D and E, and then we go a lot higher. Alternatively, there is the bearish scenario whereby this is the top of our wave three, and then the wave four, in fact, is gonna be a big WXY where this is our W, this is our X, and then Y comes down lower, where I was targeting around 2.2K. OK, so those are the two main playouts that I see happening. And as I say, tomorrow's close will probably give us a good indication as to which one of those is going to happen. Um, and I'll explain the significance of tomorrow's close based on some key technical levels um, that have been very instrumental in the past. So first of all, just explaining this potential bullish setup. So obviously we've got this horizontal block here. We all had our eyes on this this range since it was formed. And uh, yeah, it's where price really consolidated. There was a huge loss of volatility during this time. So obviously Bitcoin was at a potential um, uh, price of value at this point. OK, it really hovered around this level for some time. And we're basically we came down below cut through it no problem and now we're testing it and we're going to see if it holds now you can argue that if we do get um, a 2019 close above this block you can argue that's a show of strength yeah 
we've gone into the block, we've bounced and failed to come down within the block and certainly not beneath the block. So you can argue that in itself is a show of strength. Okay, so that, that's one kind of plus point for the bulls, I guess. Um, now looking at this, obviously we had this aggressive move up and I do see it as being corrective. Reason being is just looking at the Elliott wave count for it as well as the pitchfork that was holding this. Again, I've explained that in previous videos and I don't want to go off at a tangent, but uh, you will see across many cryptos, this obviously in Bitcoin it looks a lot more aggressive whilst in other alts it looks a lot more corrective. Um, but yeah, as I say, uh, this certainly has come down at a much, much slower um, pace as to this price action going up, which suggests that it is correcting this move. So that's the argument that we are seeing a flag here and that we are going to push higher. Now, the way it's come down, there is a potential Elliott wave count in this W, three waves down W, three waves up X, then three waves down to make Y, expanded flat second X wave, and then we've come down in three waves to make our Z, where the third wave of this three wave structure for wave Z, the third wave is a 0 0.382 fib extension of the first wave, which is this one here. So yeah, it's hitting the fibs. And uh, so yeah, potential Elliott wave completion to the downside. Now, I did mention the significance of this downward pitchfork, which I can see now a lot of people are using across Twitter. Um, and it seems to be, yeah, it seems to be uh, what a lot of people have got their eyes on. Now, the significance of this pitchfork, and I, I did mention that there's a bit of a pattern for me in the sense that we come down, hit our lower median line, we then bounce to our median line, come down and fall sh just short of the lower median line on the second occasion of it coming down. As a result, next time it goes up, it actually plows upwards through to the upper median line before then continuing in its downtrend. And we see the same thing play out. Um, where was it? Here. So again, we come down, hit our lower median line, up to the median line, try for the lower median line again, fail to hit it. As, as a result, we, we fly and pump higher, but again, resistance at the upper median line, we come back down where we hit. So we've hit the lower median line, bounce to the median line, and again, so we come down to this point here, and we've got to our median line, having a bit of trouble here, um, getting through the median line, but there is that argument that it's gonna start moving up to the upper median line. Now, the thing is, <clears throat> at present, there's a, obviously a good argument to go short next time it hits the upper median line. But obviously, the, the yearly close will be very significant, which I'll come to in a moment. Um, if price, if price gets above this upper median line, for me, that is a huge show of strength. Okay, because throughout this flag that it's come down, it's never once gone significantly above this upper median line. OK, so for me, seeing it either get above this upper median line would be a huge show of strength, suggesting that we're seeing a loss of this downward flag and we're going to start seeing a move higher. OK, alternatively, another thing that would get my attention is if we come up to the upper median line and then we start to flag and consolidate, potentially uh, setting up for a break above the upper median line, at which point you'd have to say that it's a good show of strength because it's not done it ever throughout this downward move. So it would suggest that we are seeing a shift in momentum from down into up. Okay, so those are the things that I'll be looking out for with this pitchfork. Um, okay, so these are really the, argue, the bullish arguments here. Now, if we zoom in, and just take a look at what price action is doing here. So let's go in on the four hourly. Now looking at this, since we uh, formed this bottom here, we've come up and it looks very three wavish. It's hard to see an impulse here. It looks very, very three wavish. Um, but that said, that doesn't mean it, it can't have bottomed. Okay. Because, and the reason being, if we just zoom out, we we'll go on the daily chart and look at previous bottoms. So let's take a look yeah here just hide this pitchfork it's not really significant so here now looking at this just from an Elliott wave perspective we come up here can you see that as a five wave count for me it's very clear it's a three wave count going up here yeah so anyone looking at this from an Elliott wave perspective would be completely put off 
going long here if you if you're focusing on just this bit of price action yeah because it looks very three wave-ish it suggests that we're going to continue our, our downward trend okay and the same thing happens here yeah we go up three wave-ish move everyone's thinking it's corrective what happens we absolutely fly to the upside absolutely fly okay so just remember that the most obvious count isn't always the correct count so here we go up you can argue this is your first impulse yeah and what happens subsequently could all be part of the correction so you could argue this is your wave one then we go into running flat wave two yeah and then you just get your really complex correction yeah before we then start pumping higher also the the alternative way of looking at it is this is indeed corrective yeah and then it's tried to come down lower but it's a it's a failure wave yeah but even if it were a failure wave it still doesn't explain why this has been three wave-ish and eventually went up but again this could be your impulse then you've got your a b c expanded sorry finishing here expanded flat wave two okay so that would explain it and that's why just because it looks three wave-ish it could potentially turn out that it is impulsive so your impulse finishes here and the following price action is all corrected and then if we apply that to what's happening right now this looking three wavish could be interpreted rather as this is your impulse which finishes here and then the subsequent price action is corrective so you've got your a b c so some kind of running flap and it could turn out to all be a more complex correction as you can see we've not really gone into any further impulse from here but what i'm saying is don't always be put off by I, I don't i never use elliott wave in isolation you have to use other indicators because although i really like elliott wave um it, it can be dubious also so you've got to look at other indicators so i just wanted to throw this out there of how in the past the price action has looked very three wave-ish and however turned out to be overall impulsive okay so i wouldn't be too put off by this looking like a three wave count suggesting we come down okay um so in terms of when this move needs to happen as i say um tomorrow is a hugely important day and i'm going to show you looking at some uh the 50 week simple moving average and also the Camarilla pivots and, and show you the significance of those and why tomorrow's price action is important. But here, this dotted red line, I'll just explain the significance of that. So going on our hourly chart. So this was where this is Friday evening where we saw the, um, the futures market uh, essentially close. So then we have our weekend price action and we've closed that gap. So you, you get a gap here on the, if you go on the Bitcoin futures market, you can see, you'll be able to see the gap. And this we've basically closed that gap now. So Bitcoin does have a tendency to fill those gaps, and that has been completed now. It has filled that gap. At the same time, it's using the median line, this big median line coming down as a bit of support right now. But overall, we're kind of woven in and out of the median line, above and below, above. So it could potentially come below once more. Okay, so now let's focus on why tomorrow is so important. So what I want to look at is let's go on the weekly chart. So weekly time frame, and yeah, let's pull up simple moving averages first. So weekly simple moving average, and I want to focus on the 50. So let's just take off 20, 100, 200. Not so important right now. Uh, and let's take off all the other annotations. So we can focus purely on the 50 week simple moving average. Now I want to show you how what the, the is whenever price hits the 50 week simple moving average it either bounces or it trends yeah at least for several weeks okay so first time it was tested here bounce clear bounce clearly respecting this um indicator this 50 week simple moving average bounces and then it, yeah it lasts how many weeks it looks like maybe 12 weeks in there and then next time it comes down you can see cuts through it and it trends until it tests it again bounces and then when it gets tested again it absolutely cuts through it as a result you get a big trend then you come down bounce bounce and then when it cuts through 
it retests, trends, and then we've gone up, cut through it. As a result, you get a strong trend to the upside. And now we're basically at the 50 week simple moving average. Now, as we stand, we are beneath it. Okay, and we're about to have our yearly close. Now, looking at this, Bitcoin usually bounces off the 50 week. The fact that it hasn't bounced here usually suggests that it is going to continue to trend through to the downside. So this is one reason I'm very, very cautious about Bitcoin. Okay, this is a long term indicator, the 50 week simple moving average. Now you can focus on the short term price action as much as you want. But these long term indicators generally tell us, you know, what is ultimately going to happen here. Now, the 50 week, where is it sitting? It's sitting at around 7,600. I want to see Bitcoin really, I want to see it close above 7,600 for the year. Okay, so that's why it needs to really move tomorrow um, and really get above 7,600, in my opinion, if it's going to give me any impression of being bullish. Okay, because I'll be hugely. Uh, cautious about being bullish in Bitcoin if this fails to close above this significant simple moving average. Okay, now I'm not going to dwell too much on the 50 week simple moving average, but I think it's huge. Okay, just as we all talked about the, the 200 being huge, yeah, where we found a lovely test of it here and tested it once again here. I think the 50 is really, really instrumental uh, here on Bitcoin. Okay, so that is the simple moving average. Now, next thing I want to talk about is Camarilla pivots, which I know isn't that well understood. So I'll try and explain it as best as I can. But yeah, firstly, on the weekly time frame, this is the most significant bit. Okay, <clears throat> you will see here how it's usually the R4, R3, R standing for resistance, S stands for support, and basically these Camarilla um, pivots are basically set at levels determined by the previous price action corresponding to the previous range. Now, we're on the weekly time frame. So from here to here is one year. OK, so it's from January through to January the following year. And as you can see, we're coming to the end of this range for the Camarilla pivots. Now, I always like to look at the closing price in relation to these very, very significant levels. OK you'll often see price bouncing off these levels. Um, so here you can see we test the S3 a number of times. We then close beneath the S3. Yeah, and then we make our in the next range, we make our way up to the R3. And yeah, it finds a bit of resistance at the R3, plows sideways. Now the show of strength here was we get above the R4, which often suggests that we're going to see a, a new trend developing. So it gets above the R4, comes down, bounces off the R3, but it closes above the R4 altogether. That was a huge show of strength. As a result, we plowed a lot higher. And you can see we test the R3, bounce off the S3, test the R4, and then eventually getting above the R4, we absolutely fly higher. Now, here in Bitcoin, since we topped out 20K, We've come down. How far did we come down? We came down to the S4 and now we're coming up and you can see how beautifully it's respecting the R3 and R4 for this yearly range. OK, so never once did we close above the R4. OK, so this was a huge uh, show of weakness in the market, in my opinion. Couldn't because the, the rule is with these Camarilla pivots is once you get above the R4 or belief beneath your S4, it's suggesting a new trend developing. OK, so failure to get above this on a high time frame, that's the weekly time frame, was hugely significant and we failed to get above and we've come down to our R3. Now, what happened at the R3? Did R3 allow us to bounce? Well, initially it did. But then how high did we go? We couldn't get back up to the R4. We've come straight back down to the R3 and actually cut through it. And now we're using the R3 as resistance. OK, where is the R3? It's at 7500. OK. So I really want to see a closing price above 7,500. I've been monitoring this for a long time and I was thinking price, you know, it really needs to get close above 7,500 at the end of this range um, if it's going to be bullish. And it's got a day left to do it, basically. 
It's got a day left. Now, if it does it, fantastic. If not, I'm sorry, but my sentiment uh, would be shifted to, to bearish, I'm afraid, for the uh, short-term future for Bitcoin. Uh, so those are the two things I'm looking at. The 50-week simple moving average and this Camarilla pivot. It's hugely instrumental. Another illustration of the use of these Camarilla pivots on the daily time frame, you'll see here again these levels getting hit time and time again. So you can see here, we come up to our R3, failing to close above the R3. Uh, where do we come down to? S3, subsequent range, where do we come up to? Uh, so first of all, on the when we're on the daily time frame, each range is one month, okay? So you get a new range for each month. Uh, R4 acts as resistance. We come down, uh, yeah, failing to hit the S3, but we managed to come up just, so it didn't act as very good resistance here. And this is the reason I wouldn't use these Camarilla pivots in isolation, okay? They're very good to complement your, your other tools that you use, basically. Um, and the closing price in relation to these levels is hugely significant. So then we come down, how far do we come down? S4, then we enter our new range, we manage to come down to the S3, and then we power higher, how high do we come? R4, then we then settle at the R3 before entering our new range, we then come down, and then, this is interesting, right? So we come down beneath the S4. That usually suggests we could be starting a new trend. But can you see how closing price for the range is above the S4? So basically what that is telling you is it was coming down, suggesting that we're going into a new trend to the downside. But all of a sudden, we close the month uh, above the S4, okay? So again, you can argue that is a show of strength here in Bitcoin. As a result, the S3 held price up, okay? But we're gonna get our new month coming up soon. Now, that that is good to see that the S3 is holding price up, but I would have liked to see it power on through to the, the R3, which we haven't really seen. It's kind of sitting in no man's land. Um, so that's just looking at it from a Camarilla pivot point of view, but it's the weekly time frame that is significant. As I say, uh, 7,500 uh, yeah, 7, is where I wanted to see the yearly close above. Um, <clears throat> okay, now I also want to talk a little bit about time. Okay, now if I were to say uh, the month of December, what would that mean to you in terms of the significance of of in the Bitcoin price. How significant is the year of uh, the month of December? Well, let's just take a look. I want to pull up the BLX chart where I've just shown you uh, what happens every December since the genesis here in Bitcoin. So as you can see, I've labeled it beneath here. And you will often see um, price, it will often re reverse or start to trend in December, okay? And that's why I've been really closely monitoring what is going to happen in December of this year. Now, I think to me, the most important inflection points in Bitcoin has been this high here and this high here. And if you watch my video, Bitcoin to 350K, you'll know that I've been calling this our wave one, two, three, and subsequent price action is wave four. Um, so yeah, and yeah, where, where was this high? It was in December. Where was this low? It was in December, December slash January. Okay, there's a little bit of um, room either side of December. But yeah, roughly around this time of the year, we get a reversal, reversal. And then well, what, where, where, where did we trend up until? December. Yeah, where do we trend down to? December. Okay, so always be cautious of a potential turnaround in December. And this is another reason why I, I have been anticipating a potential move to the upside. But as I say, I'm getting a little bit concerned that if we, I mean, if Bitcoin can get above 7,500 tomorrow, that is a huge show of strength. I'll be really interested in Bitcoin if it does that in terms of going long. But if it fails, then in my opinion, we may see a bit of a bounce to the upside, but ultimately, I think the trend from December 2019 through to December 2020 will be down. Because again, let's just look on the weekly. When pretty much from December to December of each year, the trend continues in one direction. So here is up, 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 down, up, 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 down, up. 
okay so i think we're going to find out obviously we're going to either trend down or up obviously but i think the closing price for the year will really help us determine whether that's going to be up or down i really think tomorrow's price action is going to be huge i really do um <clears throat> now there is the argument that this is going to be a big correction coming down to potentially 2.2k uh, is what i reckon probably a, this is if it ends up being bearish so there's a potential wxy count it looks very regular could certainly play out this way and i would be looking for it to uh, get reverse in december of 2020 yeah that's what i'd be looking for a trend down like so so uh, there'd be wonderful shorting opportunities in my opinion if this is going to trend down and i'd be using the pitchforks really to time my entries on that but as i say uh, we all generally want Bitcoin to be bullish, but I'm always objective with it. I say what I see, I have, and I'm not going to keep saying you know, Bitcoin is definitely bullish because no one has a crystal ball. I want it to be bullish. Everyone's in a much better spirit you know, when Bitcoin's bullish, but we've, we've got to be realistic. At the end of the day, we're trading money, and uh, it's hard-earned money, and we don't want to just throw it away. So we've got to be objective and say what we see. Um, yeah, tomorrow's closing price is going to be absolutely huge. Um, so, yeah, just going back to Bitstamp. So I think I pretty much covered everything I wanted to mention. So there is the argument. This is a short strength closing above, you know, your 6,800 because it's above this range. Now, let's say, let's say, for example, Bitcoin um it doesn't close above 7500 okay which as i say would be quite concerning for me i do think it can still come up you know it doesn't mean we have to straight away start trending down it could come up but i would be i would be sure definitely at the uh, upper median line that said i would be very happy to switch my bias if it gets above the upper median line and the reason is but as I said earlier, it's never once got above the upper median line. That would be a good shift in momentum. And it could actually um, negate the closing price for the year if we get above this upper median line. Okay. So those are the key things that I'm looking out for. Yeah. Obviously, we've got the halving in May 2020 and everyone's anticipating a cut in supply around that time. So obviously expecting a bit of a bull run up until that point. Um, yeah, certainly. But obviously, it's not just about supply. It's also about demand. So we'll have to see. Uh, so yeah, halvings don't always guarantee price going up is what I'm trying to say, as you'll know from monitoring Litecoin. Um, so yeah I th i'd be repeating myself if i went on any further i think so i think those are the key things i want to point out tomorrow's price action is absolutely key in my opinion and um yeah again apologies i've not done so regular updates i think it's been about three weeks since my last video i have uh, obviously been focusing on my group uh where i do regular updates so if you do want to those regular updates it's 50 pound a month where i do those on uh, cryptology uh, where the link is in the description to this video if interested check it out otherwise yeah i'll do occasional videos on youtube but they won't be as timely as my uh, cryptology updates where that's where i put most of my attention and of course if you want to learn more about the ways i trade and um, all the tools that i use to trade and generally learn how to trade uh yeah there is my course and uh each month there's a a few places for the 50% discount, which you'll see at the end of this video or in the description. Uh, it's called The Works. That's the name of the course. Uh, so, yeah, check that out if interested. But I wanted to, all I wanted to highlight in today's video is the key levels that I'm looking out for. Okay, the yearly close is always very, very significant. Uh, at the moment, bears are in control. That's what I'll have to say. Bears are in control. Bulls will have to do something tomorrow if they really do need to step their game up tomorrow, if this is going to turn around. Um, that said, these key closing prices, although significant, no indicator trumps any other indicator. And so if we do find price fails to close above 7,500 or 7,600 tomorrow, 
then if price still pushes above the upper median line, to me that is still a good show of strength. And I would still consider it bullish moves, but I'd be very, very um, skeptical on on that. And I would certainly be shorting at the upper median line. All right, guys, any queries, as always, put them in the comments. And if you've enjoyed today's content, then leave a like. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up there, guys. All right, take care.